Okay, so we're here today at Turkey Creek and um, well, I'm actually going to fish the slider today. I know it's only about seven foot deep, but usually anything over six foot, I like to fish a slider. I just feel like I just like that little bit more distance between the, the float and the uh, and the tip of the rod. So here we go. I'm going to show you how I do a slider anyway. So sliders are slide and float. So I've got a stop knot here already pre-done. We're going to slide that onto the line like this. Slide off the little thing it comes with. Put it in the garbage. Tighten up on the knot. Now, some people are trim this. I like to leave it. Reason being is just it goes. If it does happen to go through the, when it goes through the eyes on the on the rod, if you trim it, sometimes it will get caught on the eyes. Sometimes it won't get caught on the eyes. If you don't trim it, it's just going to flow through. You know, it'll just flow through like this by itself. It's really subtle the stuff that I use. These ones are made by uh, I think Phil or Lindy or someone like that. And um, there's a bunch of other ones on the market too. Um, techniques or something makes one as well. So here we go. We got the slider on there. That goes up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slip on a sliding bead. And the reason for the bead is because sometimes if you put the float connector on or the float, it'll actually slide right over that stop knot. We don't want that. So the bead goes on. Then we use a connector for the float. These are actually um, matrix uh, ledger beads, ledger connectors, but I like to use them for the float. So that goes on next. Then I pop another bead on. And I'll explain that a little bit later on why we do that. Feeds on, there we go, we're all good. Now, don't know what color is gonna be good today, but let's start with a black tip float, see what we get. So just a straight peacock waggler, homemade. Give that a go. We're gonna Open up the clasp. It's a bit breezy, so I'm getting line and stuff all over the place. Slip on the float, close it up. So if I need to change it, quick change, easy to go. Now, next is the split shot. So I know this floats here, I do it the old way, it's most probably about 2 AA. How about that, Steve? 2 AA. Is that what? Point. 2 AA? Point. A gram? Exactly. Yeah, you've got the things on it. Anyway, slip on a couple of split shots. Steve will tell me. Yeah, about a gram. About a gram, yeah. So this thing will be about a gram and a half, two grams. Put a couple of shots on. It's the best way to do it with your teeth. I just give it a check every so often because sometimes these float so. Right. It's cocked in the water, so we're good. So now, what I'm going to do is start to bring that thing down. So I always like to put a, a number six or a number eight split shot about a foot above the bulk shot. Reason for that is I don't want that float crashing down onto that bulk shot. Just don't like the don't like it when it does that so this is usually about the length of the float away from the from where the bulk shot's gonna go now I'm gonna start bulking up I got a couple of BB on there now now we'll run around with a couple of number sixes and we'll see bring that in need your glasses because the shots are small. So 
again, just every so often I check to see how far down I'm getting on it. Coming in nice now. Get a couple of number eights on. I use the number eights as my finishing shot just to just to finish it off real nice when that thing settles into the water. I always like to try and keep the shot too, all the split shot, all the splits all together. Just stops the line sometimes from kind of swiddling around and stuff and whatever else. I know it looks, you know, a bit weird to some people to fish it different, but I've been fishing like this for, I don't know, forever. It works for me. So we get it back out again. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay, it's coming in nice. We still need a bit more shots on that to take it down. I would say most probably two more number 50. So do that for me. Going down nice now. Alright. So, let's take a look out there. Let's put it out there, Amber. Let's have a look at it. Boat's cocked. It's just sitting there nice. Another number eight shot there. We'll just, just the white, the little white band, the yellow band, just sticking out the water a bit. I want to take that down just a bit more, but we'll worry about that. Once we get the hook on and we get our depth and whatever else. So now, anyway, we're gonna put a hook on. I don't bother with a hook length most of the time, unless the fishing's really tough. I go right through here. This is really fine diameter line. This is actually eight pound line. The diameter is 0.1, is it 0.12, Steve? Yeah. yeah, it's really fine, isn't it? So I'm gonna go right down onto that one. Um, I'm feeling confident today. So I'll most probably start with a, a 16 hook. If I start to pull out a fish or break off or whatever else, then we'll we'll move it up to a 14. So I don't tie knots on my on my on my hooks. What I do is I whip them on. Knotless knot, whatever you want to call it. So make a little loop, put the hook next to the loop, grab it, and then what I'm gonna do is wrap it around the shank seven to nine times. I do seven, I do nine, that's two. Three, four, five, six, seven. There's that kingfisher. Eight, nine. Now what I'm going to do is wet the line, pinch the end of it there to hold a to hold the loop and hold the hook. And I'm going to thread the tail through the loop. I don't know whether it went through there, but let's give it another go. So it's through. Wet it again. And what I'm going to do now is put the, the tail in my teeth, and I'm going to pull the tail the hook and the line at the same time and it's going to close up that loop just like that okay. now if you wanted on there you could have a little hair rig on there if you wanted as well we're not going to bother with that today so, as always being the perfectionist that I am trim it off here we go so now we're set for the, we're gonna to set to find a depth. I've got all the shot about one third of the way down from the stop knot right now, just cause I wanna see what it is. You could pinch a big swan shot on the end of this hook. I like to use plummets. Some people don't like to use plummets because the plummet will actually sometimes, if you got a silty bottom, will get stuck in the bottom. But yeah, plummets for me, I use them. I can play around with the, the depth. Once I get the dead depth, even if it's in the silt a little bit, kind of feel it when I'm pulling back on it now you can sling this out overhand if you want to but when I'm when I'm getting me depth I always like a nice underhand cast now I know what I'm going to be fishing today already because I know this I know this location very very well we got a little bit of a, um, a channel that goes through the middle 
So what I'm doing now is I'm just casting out, letting that go on the far side like that. Now it's buried the float. No, the floats come up just under the water by about, you can just see the black, it's about six, seven inches under the water. So what I'm gonna do now is bail over. I'm gonna pull it back to where I want it. Okay. So the float's gone down. So that means that we're not deep enough. So what I'm gonna do now is bring it back in. I'm thinking about six inches, could be wrong, but I'm gonna move it up about six inches and just see what happens. Okay. So moving the shot, moving the moving the uh, the sliding knot up six inches actually increases the depth by six inches. Because if your hook's on the bottom, then that float is going to slide up to the stop knot, and that should give us the exact depth, the depth that we're looking for. So anyway, we're going to give it another go. Put it out again, nice underarm cast. Bring it back to where you want it. Let it settle in, and you can just see that float come up now. So that means we're over depth a bit. So that means I got six inches to play with float wise. So we're going to reel it back in and I'm going to slide it down three inches now. So grab the knot, move it down about three inches, Let's see what happens. it out, bring it back again to where you want it, and it's just come up a little bit, so I'm about an inch out now I think, we'll give it another go, put the maggots crawling out, little buggers, so I'm going to move that stuff knot back down about another inch, about there, just let's see what happens. Like there's the channel that goes through the, the middle there is not really pronounced. It doesn't drop off like a like a step. It kind of slides in. So it's like a it's like a shelf but, but very gradual. So I would imagine it takes about three foot from where it starts to where it comes into the channel to drop about maybe eight to twelve inches in depth. So let's give it another cast out again. Back out past where you want it to be, draw it back, let it slide in. So that float just popped up again. So I was most probably close the first time. I'm going to drop it another inch and hopefully that's about it. There you go. Underarm cast again. Cast out past where you want to be. Draw it back. There we go, that's it right now. So I've got my depth. I just realized I don't like the color of that float. I can't see it too well. Steve's into another one there. I'm just gonna lock this hook onto the the eye that comes with the rod to hook it on there. Now, we want to remember our depth in case we have a break off or whatever else and we need to do that. So, hooks on the clasp here. You can count the eyes if you want. One, two, three. It's up to about the fourth eye there, right? What I like to do, just if I break off, I know it goes to the fourth eye, but just in case the knot does happen to slide a little bit, what I do is, I give it a little bit of a mark on the line down the line there. Alright, can get a bit. If you break off then it's gonna move so you just we know the fourth eye is about where it's supposed to be in and around where the depth is. Now putting the marker on the line like this too also acts as a little bit more of a you'll you'll find if you run your finger down the clean line it's kind of smooth. If you run it on the on the magic marker it's just a little bit rough so it just stops that stop knot real nice. It's going to move a little bit, it won't move. So anyway, 
what I'm going to do now is I don't like that float, so I think yellow's, yellow's all right for me today. I'm colorblind, by the way, so I see things a little bit different than some people. They don't like black floats, but I see black really, really well. So I'm going to try and match this float up as close as I can to the other one. I think that's about it. That way I might have to add or take off another shot just to see what I'm going. Give it a cast out and see. And we'll do it underarm it right now. Just want to get the what the float looks like. Now it's cocked up. Now it's settling in real nice. So I need a few more shots on that one. That's a little bit heavier than the, the other one is. I could put one big shot on or I could put a bunch of little shots on. So I'm going to put a bunch of little shots on because I like to play around with them on the line, move them up and down and whatever else with them not getting the right, you know, settle on the float. So I'm going to put a couple of number sixes on there again. And what I'm going to do this time, I'll stick a couple above the bulk shot. Put this bit shut down so I don't lose them. Give it a little go, see what it's like. See if it settles in. One, one more number six shot will do me. And I'll be happy on that. Even underarm casting, you can get out really good. So that's settling in nice. Maybe another shot on that, just another number six to number eight to bring it down where I want it. But I'm happy so far. So now what we're going to do is we got to play around with those split shots on there. We got to get it set just right, right? So. Hook on again, tighten it up, make sure that I don't use drag when I fish. So now what we're going to do is I need to move these shot down the line. So I'm going to move a number eight shot down about eight inches from the hook. That's called the finishing shot. So when that float goes in and cocks, it's going to go down with the bulk shot. Then I'm going to have a, another group of shot down below the bulk shot called the drop shot. The drop shot's going to take that float down a little bit more, right? And then that finishing shot is going to settle in that float exactly where I want it. So now I got another number eight there, but I'm going to move it down. So about 12 inches above the finishing shot, I'm going to put a bunch of my drop shot. And I've got a number eight and two number sixes. And I've spread them apart like that. I can put them together nice and tight, but I always like it. I always like my shots spread apart a little bit. People say it tangles. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it doesn't. So then I'm going to move my bulk shot down then. Down. Like so. And again, I got a little bit of, I got a gap in between the shot. If I start to tangle, I'll, 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 I'll I'll push them together but spreading the shot down on the line there too you got it bolt it's it's one thing but it, I find when you cut when when you cast in and it's settling in like that will drop like it's not all gonna drop as one big ball it's gonna drop as a line of shot so it's a little bit more when it goes in and settles in it's not a, a, it's not like a drop like that it settles in nice because of that then this will drop it down a little bit more and that number eight will finish it off now I've got about three foot between my bulk shot now and my and my stop knot. Again, I've got my, my my number six just above the bulk shot there. I can bring it down if I want to, but I like it like that. It doesn't smash against the shot and whatever else. If I wasn't fishing with a, an adapter, sometimes like the, the butt of the float smashing against this will actually crack the butt of the float, but this is easier. It's just more gentle as well when it goes in. So we're good to go right now. 
let's check it out see what we got again I don't use drag on the reel so anti reverse is off I use my finger to control a you know to control the line control the fish now we can do an overhead cast if we want so cast over beyond where you're gonna fish flick up the bail sink the line and then flick the bail open if you don't flick the bail open that float's gonna come drawing back towards you okay so I'll show you that again I got a leaf fish that's guy yeah that's kind so I want to overcast the, the rod we got all that duckweed here today too so I want to overcast the, the float today then I'm going to draw it back to where about I want it sinking the line at the same time by keeping the rod tip under the water we don't want a floating line because we got a lot of surface skim here and stuff and just get that line down get it beneath the skim then it's not going to interfere with how the float plays around in the water so cast it out past where you want it draw it back to where you want it it's important when you're fishing the slider you got to flip that bail over then and the reason being if you don't that float's going to come up the line to the stop knot which is going to bring it back past where you where you want to be it sounds confusing once you get used to it you'll you know it's, it's very very straightforward see how that floats sitting on the line right now perfect so overcast it bail over sink the line you see it in the water when it comes back the float flick it open the bail you'll lose a there you go the duckweed's catching on the eyes right now there we go we're down we're in so i'm going to put another shot on that float because it's way too high up the water for me and we're ready to fish that's fishing the slider get to it So I'm going to add that other shot onto the bulk shot. There we go. Give it one more go and let's see what we got. You can underarm cast this too if you want. I'll show you that. So again, you're going to take the I always take it just round about the where the, the bottom shot is. You can take the hook, but if you let go of it, sometimes you get it hooked into you. So just in and around above the, the hook, take it. You can flick it right out. Nice, easy thing there. Bring the rod back, bail over. We've sunk our line. Flip the bail open again. And that float's coming up. There you go, settled in. You're sticking out about half inch out the water there now, so. Maybe a number eight to bring that down a bit more, but that's nice and fine. So, hey, how are you? Good, yeah, how are you guys? Good, good thanks. Good, have a good day. Yeah, you too. So, let's get going. Start the session. With a nice little homegrown compost or leaf worm. Look at those. Nice and firm. Little wigglers too. You see the way they wiggle in your hand? He's not gonna do it for me. But if you look in the box there, they're wiggling around. So, take this guy, just hook him once. And I always give him a second hook. There you go, he's on. Really pungent smell on those things too. So, let's see what we get. Sunglasses on. Polarized, of course, take the glare off the water. All right. And in we go. The line, bail over, sink the line, let the bail open again. There we go. So you can fish a loaded waggler too, just a loaded waggler when you're fishing a slider, cocks faster, not as much shot on the line. This, they're not loaded, they're just straight peacocks for today. And um, 
you know, I've got my bulk shot down there. It's most probably a little, just a little bit on the light side for fishing the slider, but I like to fish as light as I can get away with, you know, when I'm fishing. And uh, you can, you'll notice, like, when you cast out and draw it back, that float kind of, it does move forward just a little bit, but if you flick the line, it's just not heavy enough to pull it off the, off the reel. So now give it that line a little bit of a flick, and it'll, 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 it'll take a, it'll take a foot, two foot of line off the reel, and then it'll settle in. So we're good to go. So I've already done some initial feeding. I put two nice lovely balls of ground bait in there about 15 minutes ago. Hopefully get the swim going. We're going to start off with a little bit of mixed hemp today. I got some hemp, wheat and barley in there. Just get it out scattered around. And a couple of niblets of corn. Good to go. If you bring the phone over there, we'll have a look. I'll show you what I got today, bait wise. I've already shown you that we got some of those lovely leaf worms in there, and I've got some nice, healthy, big, big dew worms in there, too. They're a good size for chopping, or you just break them off into little pieces and put them on the you know, fish them on the hook, Something like that. For hook baits today we've got some wax worm. He's a little cold right now because I've had him in the fridge overnight, but he'll start to warm up and become a little bit mobile. Got some meal worm. They're really when you put those on the hook, they really really riddle around and bring the fish in or whatever else. Um, ground bait there mixed there. We got maggots. These guys are getting out all over the place. Oh, ran those off this morning. They're just for feeding, they're a little small for the hook, but if you put three of them on a hook, it's good. We've got some chopped shrimp here, because we do get into catfish here and both in, so they do like that. The carp will take that too on some days. Some nice corn, hemp, wheat, and barley. And what else have we got? Uh, got some bread for punch later, or we'll pinching it for flake, it's on there. And also we've got uh, liquidized bread which is just fresh bread that's been put into a blender and it makes a nice just a stimulant in the water when you need it you know mid-morning when things you've got it going and it starts to slow down about 10 10 30 then you can get in with a couple of balls of this usually just stimulates the swim for you for carp and suckers and stuff like that cats will come in on it well that's it let's get down and do some fishing see you in a bit <laughs> 